What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to basically do this problem where you try to detect if two numbers have the opposite sign or not. Okay, using bitmask. So if I given you a number like um, 3 and negative 3, tell me if they have opposite signs or not. And we have to use it only with bitmasks. So that's basically the problem. Okay, so the thing is, is that um, this is actually pretty easy if you think about it. So first of all... Um, how, what does a, a sign or an opposite sign even mean, right? What does a negative sign mean in bit masks? Okay, so let's say you have three and negative three. So let's say we have three and negative three. So if you were to basically um, convert three into bit masks, you have zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, one, right? Because uh, you have zero, which is one, two to the zero power is one, plus two to the first power is two. Right, so this gets you, this gets you to zero zero one one. Okay, so that's three. Okay, okay, all right. Um, basically, in computers, if 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 a sign is negative, what they normally do is they would um. They would flip the bits, right, and um, add one. Right, so they would have a uh, do two's complements, which is zero zero. Uh, so this is going to get you one one zero zero. You add one, so then you have one one zero one. As you can see, when you flip all the bits and then you add one, so this is the two's complement of three, right? So this is the this is the values of the inverse, right? So if you were to add three and negative three, you get zero, right? Because all these bits would end up becoming um, zero, right? If you add this bit, these bits. And this bit, these bits, right? If you add them up together, add them up, uh, you're, you're going to get zero, right? So this is two's complement. All right, so as you can see from here, using um, the bits, the computer represents the first bit for for negative numbers is always a one, right? Because this, um, this would represent a negative number for that. And for positive numbers, it's normally like zero or... Actually, it's not normally zero, actually. But uh, for negative numbers, there's normally a one that represents positive or negative inside the whole number system. So if you were to XOR both of these, like so if you were to XOR both of these values, um, all of the values are end up going to become ones, right? All these values are going to become ones. So all the, all the positives... Uh, uh, yeah, all these values are going to end up becoming ones, right? So all the zeros and zeros. So if it's different signs, all them the first values would become ones. So then you're going to, if you XOR both of these, right, you would get um, zero and one would become one. Zero and one, one become one. One, zero becomes one. And then uh, except for the this, this value, one, one would become zero. Okay, so you would get this number, uh, one, 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 zero, okay? So now all you have to do is just check, does this, is this value, right? Is this, um, does it have a one in the first place, right? In the first place, is this value negative, right? So normally if, if a value is negative, it would have a one on the far left corner in values in um, binary, right? In representation from two's complement, right? So um, if there is one, if this, binary representation is negative so it's less than zero then pretty much you know you have opposite signs so all you have to do basically is basically take both of these numbers and XOR them and then you check if this your end result is less than zero because then it would have a number here at the front all right so if they were they had opposite signs then there is there's going to be a one in the front so you just check if it's negative so if it's less than zero then that's the case okay um, if they don't have opposite signs, you know, it's not the scenario. So basically to detect if they're both If they both have opposite signs or not, you have to just um, You XOR both of them and then you check if the first leading value here is a one or not. Okay All right, uh, another way to do it is the same thing as checking uh, XORing them both but it's to check if this value has a one or not another way you could do is you actually could shift it right by 32 uh, 31 bits to the right because we know an integer 
has the at most uh, 32 bits, right? So an integer has at most 32 bits. So if you were to shift all the 31 bits to the right, so you have this number 31 bits to the right, so that's gonna get rid of all these values, right? Besides the last value in the first place, this one here. So then we don't actually have to compare and check if it's less than zero, we just have to check if after shifting it right down by 31 bits, is our last bit set? And if it is set, then that means they have opposite signs. If it's not, then it doesn't, okay? So I'm gonna actually show you the code now for both of these. All right guys, so here's the code for it. Um, so the first way to do it is just to XOR them both, X and X, XOR Y. And then um, basically if the leading value is a one and to check that, all you have to do is check if it's negative or not. Because if it's negative, that means the leading value of the first bit is one. So you just check if it's negative. So to do that, you just check if it's less than zero. If it's less than zero, then that means that it's negative. So that means that they do have opposite signs, right? Because we have a leading bit of one, okay? All right, so the other way to do it is just to XOR, X, X, XOR Y, and then you shift it right by 31 bits. If you shift it right by 31 bits to the right in the end, um, that's gonna get you the last bit, the first, first most bit, the first most bit on the first value of your result, right? The first most bit of one. And uh, if that is the case, if it equals to one, then that means they have opposite signs. Otherwise they don't, right? Because basically both of, both of these are just checking if the first bit value that was set is actually equal to one. Uh, and then that means they have opposite signs because when you XOR them, right? If they do have opposite signs, that means there's, there's like when you XOR them, the end result is a negative value. So there has a first bit that is set that is one. So yeah. Um, here I just test it in the main method. I just create a variable of x equal three and y equal negative three. And I just print if it has opposite signs or not. So in this case, if you run it, it's going to say opposite signs. Yeah, because three and negative three have opposite signs and running it, the XOR value does work. So that's basically how you do this problem. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.